there is some actually kind of deeper pitting and there's also some raised parts. So we're ending up using the same technique that we used on our last rotary build for the rotary shifter cart. It actually worked great. Um, we just used super fine grit sandpaper. Right now we're at 400 and we're gonna move, step it up to 1000 after we do our first pass. But basically we just glued it with um, spray adhesive and we just clamped it down onto this piece of glass so we have a really flat finish. Um, this is kind of like a backyard way to do it, but we just want to see if we can get it running. And then, you know, if it's still super bad pitting, then we will have to go to a machine shop. Um, it was kind of interesting to note that there is some scoring on here. You can feel that with your fingernail. I don't know if y'all can see that. And then we have this whole area that is pitted. So yeah, we're just going to lap it and uh, we'll see how it goes. So using the sandpaper on this side, we went up from 220 grit all the way to 1000 grit, and we actually have some really great results on this. Um, a lot of the pitting is much less pronounced, and I do not think we'd really have any problems with compression leaking from this pitting. And the score over here is a lot less noticeable, and your fingernail does not catch on it as much. So we have really great results for the side housing. So the one problem is the other side housing that has the pinion gear is a lot deeper pitted. So we're gonna have to start working on that, probably do a lot more passing with the sandpaper and we'll see how that goes. So yeah, we got the uh, oil seal out and we got the snap ring out. So now, per the SACS um, instruction service manual, we can just uh, tap this on a piece of wood. Okay, so now we have the eccentric shaft out. Um, we can, we can, we'll have to decide if we want to get the pinion gear out, but this will make it a lot easier to resurface all of this. All right. So with that, the thousand grit is done. Now, honestly, I'm very impressed by how this turned out. Um, visually and just by touch, it is extremely smooth. Um, even better than the machine surfaces that, you know, you see on engines and everything. Um, you know, of course they're, may be variations in like the large scale, but you know, small scale, very smooth, looks great. Um, this score right here is a lot better and the pitting is not as bad. Obviously this is not, you know, a professionally machined surface. So there could be some problems with this. The problem that we ran into is we called a couple rotary shops and they really just work on, you know, RX sevens, RX eights and, you know, large scale, larger, and uh, mass produced motors, and they really don't work on these types of motors. So to get this machine, we'd have to go kind of like a custom machine shop, um, and it'd probably take a long time and be a little bit more expensive than we we're you know willing to spend. So we're definitely gonna try this first, and if it doesn't work, you know there's still a couple thousands left over there, so they could still um, machine it down for us. It's you know we're not we haven't ruined the block or anything. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out and uh, we'll get to assembly. All right, so we repacked the bearings with grease. Um, another thing to note, one reason we might not have had compression is because it seemed like somebody took this apart before us and they used grease to put all the apex seals in. We're gonna use Vaseline, which a lot of rotary guys do, and that's because one, it will lubricate it and keep any like startup wear and tear from the initial disassembly lube, and also it will burn off and then the air fuel mix, or the fuel oil mixture will then act as a lubricant once this burns off. So it'll be cleaner and it won't gum everything up. Nice. So this is Yama Bond. It's used for two stroke casings, uh, just as kind of a sealant. So since we're not really sure if these uh, casings are warped or if they have any imperfections or anything, we're gonna use a very small amount of Yama Bond on the outside. Side seal is nice and springy. And now we're doing the corner springs. So these have two springs on each corner. So one faces down and then one goes on top of it and faces upwards. And then we have our corner seal that goes on top. 
springs nicely. Cool. So yeah, before these were not really springing very much. So this is a big improvement. So we have all the springs working really well. And then since these are um, split apex seals, we put the small piece in first. So the Vaseline will hold that in place when we put this in there or inside of the uh, rotor housing. And then later we can slip in these a lot easier. So we have our eccentric shaft facing to the right and then that puts this corner facing right at the spark plug. It's kind of nice because the, uh, the rotor only fits in one way. You know, you don't have to like guess or use marks to time or to line everything up right. All right, so now we get to put the um, apex seal spring in, do it facing upwards, and then it will go into um, this little notch on both sides. So the other split side is gonna have a similar notch like this. And um, so yeah, you just need to get this under that notch on that side and make sure that it's all right. And then you can slide the top, uh, bigger part of the apex seal. There's our last apex seal. So with that, all of our springs are in. Now let's give it a little spin and see what. Yeah, that's cool. Let's see. Final installation. Got a little bit of spring to it, that's good. And now, the bolts. Okay, so now we're torquing these to six foot pounds, which is not very much, but it's a aluminum casing, so. See if this bad boy's got compression. That's definitely harder to turn. Yeah, I th honestly, dude, I think we actually have a really good chance of this somehow working. Heck yeah. Ugh, yeah, no, that's like genuine compression. I mean, of course I have no leverage right here, but it's better than it was before, which is kind of spin over with nothing. So, high hopes this actually may have some compression. I think it's at least gonna have enough compression to run. You know, it may not be a, you know peak power, but I think we got a good chance. Now that the magneto assembly's on, which is also pretty cool because this also has a generator for lights and for a battery. So we could run a headlight on this thing, which would be kind of cool. But, um, so now we're putting on the fan. One interesting thing is uh, the threads on this are really messed up, but they're not just like bent or anything, they're chipped off. So it seems like the previous owner hammered on them. Problem is that we can't get this nut to thread on, 
So we have to put this castle nut on backwards so it skips those first couple threads. It's kind of weird and not ideal, but I think it's better than having that little oil pump or fuel pump sticking out of the front of the engine. The last piece to go is the pull cover. So I'm actually super excited for this. Um, we spent a lot of time working on this, had a lot of work into it, and you know, it'd be great to save some money and not have to take this thing to a machine shop. Um, you know, if it works good enough, it works good enough. We're not trying to, our original plan was actually to turbo this engine, but um, after seeing the insides of this, that is definitely not even an option. I would not trust this thing turbocharged. So there's actually one piece that I forgot to put on here. We need the um, counterweight for the extractor shaft on this side. You know, I was just checking the yard pan tension, so we'll put this on. It's about time to test. <sighs> yes, sir. Um, so yeah, I checked for spark. Everything seems to be doing well. You wanna just give it a couple pumps? Oh, that, okay. <laughs> that kind of sounded like maybe it was the gas I put in there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Wow. Oh, good tunes. Dude. That's that's very satisfying. Yeah. Cause I spent I spent a long time rebuilding this thing. Yeah. It was a lot of work. But. Yes. Okay. Sir. So we'll put the carb on and we'll try and actually run it. not tuned so we're just gonna I guess we can start by trying to do it with throttle or should we just we might just start with the starter fluid. Yeah. Alright go for it. Whoa! <laughs> Heck yeah look at the uh we got a Smoke. lot of smoke. Smoke it up baby <laughs> smoking it up but that dude what no way Yeah, I guess we gotta get an exhaust and everything built up, but that's all the proof we need. I mean, that was no starter fluid, just had it on the throttle, and then I actually kind of idled as well. So that's pretty insane. Um, it looks like we gotta work in rotary. So, wow, let's go. That was great. That's probably one of the best case scenarios for this thing, and I think we can keep going with the build. Started up like a champ, sounded like it ran pretty healthy. Spit to flames too, that's pretty sweet. So. Next up, it's trying to get this thing fitted onto our ATV frame. It's going to be a little challenging because with the clutch pulleys and everything, it's a pretty big assembly. But um, I don't think it should be too difficult. And then we'll be one step closer to having probably one of the world's only rotary ATVs. So thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed for the next episodes. Thank you, Power Sports, for being our sponsor. And we'll catch you next time.